Welcome to this week's Dirt Shed Show, where we have the big news. We'll be announcing the winner of the Nuke Proof competition, where the winner takes home that Nuke Proof reactor with upgrades. Plus, we'll be heading over to California to see Martin and some weird tech, all coming up on this week's Dirt Shed Show. All right, I'm back in the dirt shed after seeing some amazing downhill riding over in France, whilst Martin is still in California. So let's head over here for some weird and wonderful things. They probably smell it now. <laughs> well, that was weird, but this is wonderful. Seth, how's it going? Good, how are you? Follow this guy on Instagram. It's my one bit of advice. Um, look at that, you've got an original sky as well. Yeah, <laughs> um, tell us about what you're doing, which is one of the wonderful things you see uh, this afternoon. I can't wait to see this. Yeah, so we're racing Kurt Boris on the dual song track on the oh bike E recumbent bike. So go check it out. How are you going to get down that track on that recumbent bike? I don't know. I actually haven't even been down the track yet, so we're going to figure it out. So it's slightly weird, but it's definitely wonderful. It's one of the great things that happens at Sea Otter, and we're going to come and check out who's your money on. You or Kurt? I don't know. It's pretty quick. You already had a little bit of dual slalom practice. Oh earlier. no. Oh no. You're going to get. I might have to. Yeah. Right. Let's uh, roll forward in time and see how that went. Hell yeah! Well, that was both weird and wonderful, wasn't it? Right, let's go check out some bikes. Gold Santa Cruz. Oh, you know when something is made to look so good that it ends up looking bad? What is it? You can't polish a turd? I mean, this Santa Cruz is no turd. But they've polished it so much, they may have made it one. I'm not sure about that. That's a lot of bling for me. A lot of bling. Nice bike. Shame about the tyres. Oh, coloured tyres. Versus love some colour on their tyres. I mean, you know, it's got an 80s BMX vibe to it. I guess. If that's what you want to go with. I mean, it certainly goes with that frame design. Mm, look at that. The Grim Donut. It's a pink bike classic. That's certainly wonderful. Uh, it's a great. A retro foes. Lovely to see. A wonderful. This Vetus has got the funkiest paint job. I uh, love it, actually. Really love that paint job. So different and, uh, what, unique. <laughs> I've seen these double steering BMXs. Ah, oh, looks like such a cool thing to ride. I don't think you can do much with them other than just kind of glide, but it, it does look fun. It does look fun. What does that say? Run, run, dear, bun, dear, blunder. <laughs> the run, dear, fat bike. I like, I like that it's a folding bike, but it looks so heavy that you'd never be able to lift it up once you folded it. Oh, okay. Solar scooter, I'm out. We found the weird. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm ready to leave it on that one. Let's get back into the shed. What's up, everybody? We're straight in this week with a big caveat that I'm not going to be able to cover everything we've seen from Sea Otter or the Lord's Downhill Test event in this short segment. For that, I suggest you head over to GMBN Tech and GMBN Racing, respectively, for our coverage from those. And Hill Films, the company behind basically every classic bike movie for the last two decades, from the collective to long live chainsaw, have got their latest release ready to go. The engine inside documents how the humble bicycle affects the lives of six everyday people from different worlds, covering everything from global issues like climate change and car culture to the transformative power of the bike since the COVID pandemic. We'll link to the full trailer in the description down below. Fancy racing a World Cup? Well, amateur entries for the Enduro and Cross Country are open now, so get yourself over to the UCI Mountain Bike World Series website, check out the entry requirements. 
Having lined up for one of the old Enduro World Series 100 events in the Tweed Valley last year and having a pot around myself, I can guarantee you it's an experience well worth doing. Okay, razzing through some quick bike tech updates now. Fox have trickled down some of the internals from the bigger shocks into the Float and the Float SL. One Up Components have released a new composite pedal to add to their range. The Propane Tai gets some clean looking updates, including that controversial headset cable routing. I've actually got a lot of time for it here. As I said, it looks pretty clean. You can come at me with your pitch box in the comments down below. If you disagree, I'll be there. Kotick Bikes have partnered with Nico Munali to create a Kotick steel front end for the Frameworks bike he'll be racing this year. Hope have released some center lock disc rotors and head over to YT's website if you want any info on the Rolling Circus Tour, where you'll be able to demo a bike across the UK, USA and Europe this year. You may well be able to test ride the new Jeff C Primus, a new kid's bike from them, available in 24 inch, 26 inch and 27.5. Travel scales with wheel size too, so another sick kid's bike option for young shredders out there. That's all from me this week. Let's catch up with Toff for the sickest thing. Right, this week's sickest thing has to be the stupid huge backflip from Tom Eisted at Darkfest. It was already the, like the most massive jump in the world at 90 foot. They bottled another 20 foot onto it, which took it to 110. And then the dude flipped it, which is so gnarly, and went like real deep, like extra 10 foot, 120 foot backflip. Like super huge, like world record or something. And what's mad is the dude still doesn't have a frame sponsor. Like this industry is ridiculous right now. We got these bike comedians, like, like, I don't even know, like making like motorbike noises with their bike or like ding, ding, ding in the spokes or something, getting paid. And like, you guys went all like weird about me last time saying that, but like seriously, can we not just like delete like two of them and give the check to him? Like, the dude deserves his flowers by now, surely. Right, that's my sickest thing this week. Time to go back to the shed. Thanks, guys. Anyway, back to the shed for the big news to announce the winner of that Nuke Proof Reactor Plus upgrade kit. So, drum roll, please. The winner is Martin Corrin. So, well done, Martin. You've got a bike in the post, you lucky devil. Well, we saw some weird stuff from Martin, and we've seen some amazing bikes on those GMBN Tech videos from Sea Otter. Probably my favorite, actually, was that Yeti downhill bike. Great to see them back on the downhill scene. And sounds like Richie Rue's gonna ride that thing. Uh, luckily, I've been over at Lord France for the UCI test event, and I got to catch up with a load of the pros, see some of their bikes. Hopefully, you've seen that video over on GMBN Tech, plus the racing news show where I talk about some of the changes that happened over there. But I think my favorite bike from that race is probably Lope Brini's bike. It's still so secretive. It's definitely got a kind of load of technology going on that you're not allowed to see. Apparently there's a, an Odin shock on there. Some of the motorbike technology that Odin's use is kind of reactive. They use those acceler uh, accelerometers and GPS and that to sort of stiffen the suspension up. Is that happening on that bike? Uh, we may never find out. Actually over on Lo Bruni's YouTube channel, they kind of hinted that there might be a new bike coming soon. So I wonder if it's that one, they should take the cover off it or they can use that mule to produce, uh, I don't know, new carbon bike. We shall find out soon enough, but head over to GMN Racing to subscribe if you haven't done already. All right, time for some hacks and bodges and the best one wins the GMN stunt mug, of course. Starting off with a pretty special hack, actually. Well, Dave has built his own bike van. I think he's done this. Uh, he's not been inspired by Blake. I think he's done this before. But check it out. He's also got a very nice Manitou retro bike with spin wheels. Very nice. I like that bike. But check out the workshop in the back of it. It's very special. So uh, well done, Dave. Everyone's been very jealous. It's a properly sorted van. Now we're moving into what I would probably guess is a bodge, but actually it's ingenious. So Ben has been riding Noidart, which I know about, he's up in Scotland. Steve did the ride up there, it's super inaccessible. So uh, Ben's saying he was out for a three day uh, ride. And we know he says it's only accessible by boat or a three day hike. And it, so he needed an inflator to get his tire seated. Obviously he didn't carry on with him, didn't fancy a three day hike just to do it. So he used this old, uh, what was it, uh, extinguisher, fire extinguisher. And then he's used that as like a tubeless, what do you call them, like inflator to get up to 120 PSI and boom, tire was seated. Well, I hope that you didn't sort of drain the fire extinguisher to do that, because that could be an emergency, but well done. That's obviously done the trick and uh, away you go. No three day hike. The next life hack, I guess you'd call it, is in from uh, Zed in Ohio, USA, who says, find someone to fall in love with, put a ring in it and boom, free bike shuttles for life. Life hack, there you go. Although he does say, the only downside is occasionally you have to do with the things they like too. There you go. 
Is that a hack too far, getting married just for some free uplifts? Finally, Andrew in Minnesota has used an old car disc brake and a bit of rebar. Sounds like a bodge, but actually, he's made a bike stand out of it. You know, the ones that go in your sort of BB? Actually, that's quite good. It looks, definitely looks pretty ropey, but works really well. So who's the winner? Um, I don't know, it's tricky. I mean, I feel like we should send one to Dave, who's built an amazing van. It is very special, and you can stick one of these stunt mugs on your shelf, and you've got the ultimate van. All right, there was no caption contest from last week because Martin was too busy out at the Marin Bicycling Museum checking out, actually sort of dribbling over all the new bikes. And that was appreciated by the viewers by the looks of it because uh, Bill the Rass says, great show, Martin. The Marin Museum of Bicycling, I really appreciated Joe Breeze's original production, Mountain Bike. Uh, and saying about there's some fabulous bikes in there. I agree, I went there quite a few years back and love seeing some of those sort of older downhill bikes, really cool. Also, Canyon Mini Cooper says, my favorite is the Mountain Cycle San Andreas. I owned one, I've owned one since 1996. Agreed, that was my dream bike when I was growing up. And I think Martin said it as well. I don't think they're as good as they looked, although you could tell us the Canyon Mini Cooper, but they definitely look really cool. Leave us uh, your captions to this funny photo. The best caption wins a GMBN jersey next week. And don't forget to send it to Hacks and Bodges using the uploader as well. Some of the things I liked this week, well, like I said already, I was over in Lord, and it was great to see those uh, racers back on track. And actually really interesting to see these two really fast juniors, Jackson Golson and Jordan Williams, who've both been pushing the elite times last year. But coming in, uh, Jordan was actually up in that, uh, race run 1.7 seconds like significantly up and had a big crash but hopefully he's okay and Jackson Golson really fast as well of course I don't want to miss out Thibaut Dupre who did take the win but Thibaut's sort of uh, you know he's a super fast rider he's kind of a bit more established I can't wait to see the racing kick off so those juniors get on also in the women's race Nina Hoffman was going fast actually had a spent a lot of time in the bushes but still came second but it was a Canadian uh, racer Gracie Hemstreet, who's just come to Elite from Junior, who took the fastest time there. Can't wait for the race in prop to kick off in about, I think it's about five weeks' time over in Lenzerheide. Now, this probably feels like old news in the fast paced uh, moving world of mountain bike social media, but Tom Eisted's ride over at Dart Fest was amazing. I loved watching his YouTube video of him flipping that 120 foot jump. That was a world record. It feels like Tom is like a massive rising star at the moment. He's, everything he's doing is incredible, including getting that third place at Crankworks over in New Zealand. So really looking forward to see what's coming from Tom Eisted as well this year. Okay, time for the bike vault where we check out the bikes that you've sent in via the uploader to see if they're nice or super nice. And we're kicking off with the super nice for sure. So this is Rob's 99 Santa Cruz Heckler. One of the original uh, Santa Cruz Hecklers, I guess. This is over in San Mateo, California. And he says, hi all, always love the show. Cheers, Rob. Uh, here's one of my rides. It was a freebie. Nice, proper retro uh, bike and it was free. He's just finished a rebuild a couple of weeks ago and it took out on his maiden ride. Modernized the cockpit a bit to fit me and slapped on some Mavic wheels I had in my stash. Love this bike. I do too. That's got to be a super nice. Some retro bikes are horrible. That one looks really good. Now back to reality with John and his soda transmitter in West Cumbria. And look how muddy it is. Uh, he actually says it's actually drying up a bit. <laughs> Doesn't look like it, does it? Like seeing a good trail hardtail, although you can't see much of it. It's lovely bright yellow underneath there somewhere. That's good. I reckon that is a nice. Love a hardtail. Well, another hardtail. Sven and his Stanton Sherpa tie. If you know me, you know that I always ring the bell for a titanium hardtail. And that is a good one. This is Sven's over in Munzbach, uh, Luxembourg. Just finished a new build. Uh, Stanton Sherpa frame. Rockshots Pike Ultimate. Fork, DT Swiss XM 1700 wheel set, Continental Argotile, Argotile tires, uh, Maguire MT7, like it. There you go. Uh, he says, mostly used for commuting to work via single tracks in the rainy country, hence why I went for a tie frame. Hard tell, I guess, well. Very nice. Moving on to Sam and his Scott Spark 2022. He's got that one with the, the shock that's hidden away in there. 
This is in Dalby Forest, a, a minus four degree winter ride, so it must be a little while ago. 23 miles of superb single track, my absolute favorite riding spot. Glad winter has come to an end now, me too. Check it out, I love the yellow with the sort of matching fork as well. Uh, kind of that stem, has that got the internal root? I guess it must have. Uh, check it out, I reckon that has got to be a super nice swell. Good looking cross country bike. Wow, this is a good one. This is the final bike in the, in the bike vault. This is Mike's 2020 Rocky Mountain Instinct, and he's in Tucson, Arizona, riding the 50 year trail outside of Tucson. This is the very top of the section called the Chutes. And that has got to be a custom paint job. Oh yeah, must be, because the fork is painted up the same as well. Grips to match, that is a banging looking bike, and it looks better in the sunshine in Arizona than it would do in the British forest. So there you go, super nice that one as well. Coming up on the channel this week, well, we've got a beginner to bike park challenge come on Saturday where we take a total beginner rider to see how well she can do on the trails. Plus on Sunday, Anna is building her dream bike packing bike over on GMBN Tech. And on Tuesday, Martin is doing a tour of Santa Cruz bicycles. Just a quick shout out for our GMBN store. Head over there for 25% off all of our jerseys and shorts for a limited time period only. Thanks for helping support the channel. All right, thanks for joining me here in the Dirt Shed this week. We've been talking about some weird stuff, some cool stuff, and some of the coolest bikes I think out there, the downhill bikes. But let me know what you think, if your bike needs to look cool, or if you're not bothered, you just want to ride the thing. Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll catch you soon.